You need to control your emotions. You're in college now. This ain't the ghetto. This is a university. This ain't the ghetto. It's a university. I'm saying you're acting like you're from the hood. Why don't you relax? Do you guys remember Jesus' sermon on masturbation from yesterday? Do you, do you need to hear it again? You don't remember? All right, let me tell you Jesus' sermon on masturbation. But promise me you won't get offended. All right, how many masturbators do we have out here today? All right, well, let's talk about masturbation for a few minutes. Let's talk about masturbation here. Now, Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, if you so much as look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever checked out a college girl in yoga pants? Walking around with, I mean, yeah. See, that's lust of the heart. And Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out! Ah! And cast it from you. It's better for you to go through life without an eye than to be cast into hell with both. He said, if your hand causes you to sin, actually he says your right hand. You know, most masturbators are right-handed. Most masturbators are right-handed. And Jesus said, Jesus said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It's better for you to go through life without a hand than to be cast into hell with both. You know, I'm, I'm good. So Jesus said, if you want to be saved from hell, uh, you need to do something about your sin. Oh, we, we have water. We're, we're good. But Jesus said, if you want to be saved from hell, you got to do something about your sin. Now, some preachers, believe it or not, some preachers will lie to you. They will say, God accepts you as you are. They say, oh, you're a sinner, you're only human, God understands. Preachers will lie to you. And, uh, and they'll tell you, oh, you don't need to stop sinning. All you have to do, just believe. Just believe. That's not the gospel Jesus preached. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. You got to stop your sin. If you want to be right with God. Through, it's called repentance. You know, I used to have what's called a carnal mind. And the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity with God. I had this carnal mind, like many college students. You know, I just want to get drunk, get high, get laid. So that carnal mindset. Your mind is on your flesh. How can you pleasure yourself? How can you gratify yourself to repent? The word repent, metanoia, means to change your mind. So I went from being carnally minded to being spiritually minded. I changed my mind about sinning. I made up my mind to sin no more. And I don't want to ever sin again. I hate sin. Look at what it does to people. Look at what it does to God. Have you ever thought your sin breaks the heart of God? When God looks down from heaven, and he sees, oh, there's, you know, there's Rocco, the gangbanger, killing people. Oh, there's, there's uh, Robert, the rapist, you know, raping little Susie. And God looks down from heaven and he sees, oh, you know, there's, uh, there's Jimmy, the homo, you know, pumping full of people with HIV. And, and God sees it all and he's broken in his heart. He's grieved in his heart. In fact, you know how Jesus died? 
Jesus died of a broken heart. He didn't die from crucifixion. That takes days. Jesus died in six hours of a broken heart when they pierced his side with a spear and they saw what looked like blood and water come out. That shows that his heart had ruptured. The pericodium sac around the heart had filled with blood and the blood started to coagulate to separate the red solid from the liquid. It showed Jesus medically, medically died of a broken heart over the sin of this world. Yeah. Your sin hurts God. Your sin killed Jesus. And your sin is killing yourself. So you ought to hate it. Love God. You know, God has done nothing wrong. You should love God because He's worthy. He gave you the breath in your lungs. You couldn't enjoy your marijuana smoke if it wasn't for God who gave you your lungs. You couldn't enjoy your fornication if it wasn't for God who gave you your genitals. You couldn't enjoy your food if it wasn't for God who gave you your taste buds. You know, God, people say, oh, what has God ever done for me? What an idiot. Well, I guess you won't miss them. You don't, you don't even know what you're missing out on. Well, even the man born without taste buds still has many blessings from God. The fact that he was born at all. And still, just to, just to enjoy the sun on your skin in the morning fill, fills you with vitamin C. It's great. It's wonderful. I mean, God has given us so many blessings. He is worthy of our love. Why should you worship God? Why should we worship God? Because he is worthy. He is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Yeah. And, and you don't blame other people for what you do. Now, why, why should we hate sin? Why should we hate sin? You should hate sin because it's worthy to be hated. I've seen in my own experience how sin has ripped apart my family. You know, uh, I grew up in a broken home. So, what'd you say? No, no, these are just friends of mine. Well, this, this is, hey, this is my spiritual family. These are my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my father? You know, him who does the will of, of God. So anyways. See, I, I help people make friends. You, yeah, you can thank. You can thank me later. But I, 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 I come from, like I said, a broken home. I've seen, I've seen how adultery. Yeah, I've. I come from a broken home too. Worse than you. How do you know? How do you know, homie? How do you know? How do you know it's worse than mine? How do you know? You need to control your emotions. You're in college now. This ain't the ghetto. This is a university. This ain't the ghetto. It's a university. I'm saying you're acting like you're from the hood. Why don't you relax? No. I'm just here to, I'm actually trying to help promote healthy families. I'm saying sin rips apart families. I've seen it. My father, it's a homeless drunk. You know, and uh, and that affected my life. Control your emotions. This is a university. Let's have an intelligent discussion. You know, violence won't help you in life. You're trying to get ahead in life. You need to start making better choices. You know, you seem very unstable. So sin hurts people. It's worthy of our hatred. Sin is not. God is worthy to be praised. Sin is worthy to be hated. I've seen how adultery has ripped apart my family. How drunkenness has ripped apart my family. I've seen it. You know? So I'm here to promote Jesus Christ. If you do the will of God, there's holiness. And if you do the will of God, there's happiness. 
that's what happens. But when you get full of the devil, you get full of anger, full of hatred. When you get full of the devil, you're not full of the love of God. So relax. What you need is Jesus. Now, yes, when you get full of Jesus, you get full of the love of God. The love of God. And the Bible says, uh, by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. What are his commandments? To love. Love God. Love your neighbor. So when you get full of Christ, get full of the love of God, you keep his commandments, you don't want to lie to people, you don't want to commit adultery with their wife, you don't want to murder, you don't want to blaspheme, commit blasphemy against God because you love him. I'm not going to take the name of Jesus in vain. I'd rather say Charles Darwin or something. But I'm certainly not going to take the name of Jesus in vain. So do, do we have any questions so far? So my message is very, very simple. You know, sin hurts people. It deserves to be hated. You ought to repent of it. Turn away from it. God is worthy of your love. God is worthy of your worship. God is worthy of your praise. And it's, it's reasonable. What's that? Charles Darwin had the mind of a monkey. By his own admission. Don't let Darwin make a monkey out of you. Now God created... What's that? Yeah, he was... No, he, Darwin, Darwin was racist. His book was called The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Darwin believed the white man was more evolved. Yes, he did. It's in his book. Have you read, have you read his book? Unedited, unabridged. His original book. Check it out. His title, his title was racist. Those were some of the examples he used. So God created God created Adam and Eve. That makes sense. God created Adam and Eve. And from Adam and Eve came all of mankind. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So you know, I mean, the gist of my whole message, I mean, sin is unreasonable, unintelligent, sin is hateful, sin hurts people, but God is worthy to be praised, God is worthy to be loved, God is worthy to be worshipped. The devil's trying to hurt you by promoting sin, you know, pr promotes broken homes. By promoting sin, he promotes broken relationships, shortness of life damnation of soul so the devil's trying to hurt you the Bible says he's seeking whom he may devour but Jesus came that you might have life and to have it more abundantly and well it should if if you admit that it's bad because we all know that in our conscience then you should stop doing it and that only comes by turning to Christ Faith in Christ. Faith that obeys. Obviously, I'm here to persuade people to the pathway of Christ. You know, I know people choose different paths. That's why I'm here. To help persuade you. So the Bible says... Say again. Well, I believe in science. Theology is a science. You know, it's, it's an ology. Theology. It's, it's the study of God. The science of God. The knowledge of God. Science is Latin for knowledge. Theology. The Greek word for God is theos. The, theology. Ology. Is the Greek word for word. So, to, it means like a lecture on God. A discourse on God. Or the study of God. Theology. It's a science. So, I'm, I'm here to promote science. Theology is the queen of all sciences. The foundation of all sciences. 
Does that surprise you? I'm glad. I mean, I'm not like coming from the right field here. Yeah. So, well, let's read some more uh, Bible verses. You know, listen to this. A lot of people, they just want to hear, you know, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. But listen to this, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. This is the vision that the Apostle John saw. Listen to this. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Dipped in blood! What an outfit! It says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, smite, 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 and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Oh, here's the scary part. Listen to this. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Do you know what a wine press is like? I hey, God bless you. Have a good one. You know, you take all these grapes and put them in the wine press and you stomp them out, you press them out. And that's what Jesus will do to sinners. He'll take the sinners, put them in the wine press of God's wrath, and stomp them out. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. So students, get ready for judgment day. Flee from the wrath that's to come. Get ready. He's going to take the wicked and put them in the wine press of God's wrath. So get ready. Jesus is terrifying. He is horrifyingly holy. But he's not only terrifying, he's also compassionate and merciful. He's not just severe, he is also good. He would rather save a soul than a damn a soul. The Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment. The Bible says judgment is his strange work. The Bible says that though he does afflict, he does not afflict willingly. He would rather give you salvation than to give you damnation. But he gives you free will. He gives you choice. If you want to choose the path of sin, you choose the path of the devil. You choose to be an enemy of God, at war with God, in allegiance with Satan. Or you can choose to repent of your sin, join the army of God in the cause of righteousness. To be covered by his blood, clothed in white washed linen, pure and clean. You're going to be on the broad road that leads to destruction or the narrow road that leads to life. And you know in your conscience, if you're living in sin, you are living wrong. Your conscience tells you in a still small voice that you are wrong, wrong, wrong. Do we have any questions so far? Do we all agree? How many of you have actually read your Bible this week? Yeah. Some of you, you know, you watch more porno than you, uh, you would ever read the Bible. You care more about your genitals than you care about your soul. You Got to get your priorities straight, people. The, the most valuable thing you possess is your
your soul. Hey, the most pleasurable experience you could ever have is a relationship with God. Get your priorities right. Thanks for watching our video. I pray that it was a blessing to your life and that you were edified and encouraged by it. Please be sure to like it and leave a comment. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends. I've been traveling the country for over 14 years, taking the gospel to the lost, to those who need it the most, because America is in big trouble and is in need of the gospel more than ever before. All it takes to bring me to your area is a plane ticket and a couch to sleep on, and uh, we could preach together or I could preach in your area, but please be sure to keep us in your prayers. We're in need of prayer partners who will get behind us as we're doing battle on the front lines and the devil comes against us. We need Christians who will pray daily for us and for our ministry. And so would you consider becoming a prayer partner with us? Also, we live by faith as a missionary family. We don't know every month where our support's going to come from, but God puts it on people's hearts and he's faithful to provide. And so if God puts it on your heart to bless our ministry and to become a financial supporter, you can do that if you go to our website, openairoutreach.com. So God bless you guys.